Hello class. Uh, thank you for joining me for uh, another another class today. Thank you for your time that you have uh, taken out of your day to be able to um, assist today's class through YouTube. Uh, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for actually taking interest to come today to today's class. And um, I also want to thank um, our brother Dennis. Like always, uh, we want to. I just want to thank him so much for his help. I want to thank him for everything he has done um, in terms of moving this class forward. Um, because it it's not it's it's not um, it's just a one man job. Um, it's really a, a team effort that we have put together here to be able to have these classes and uh, be able to have a resource for you guys so you can actually learn together with us. So thank you for his life and. May God continue to use Brother Dennis as well. Um, in today's class, we are on Unit 3, Lost Opportunities. Um, we know Brother Dennis gave the, the first one, and I'm going to give the second one today of this unit. And uh, class number 15 is, what should I do with Jesus? Basically a question, what should I do with Jesus? Um, is how we're going to open up today's class. And um, also, if you want to just uh, go ahead and uh, join me in a prayer, let's go ahead and ask God to, to teach us today. Amen. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be here. Thank you, God, for allowing this this day or this afternoon for whoever's watching this, God, to, to be able, God, to, to listen to us. Thank you that they have those resources to be able to listen to us. Thank you that um, you have given me this this class, God, this this opportunity to talk about the many things that you have to teach us, God. Please, please allow me, God, to be able to be clear to to this youth, God, to whoever might be watching, God, that they may be able to understand more, God, and not less or, or, or be confused or anything like that. Please allow us to to be able to learn together, God, with these times that we are facing, God. We we know that it's a challenge, God. We're we might not be used to uh, still being in a space that we're in today. But I do also know, God, that through challenges, God, we come out better, God. And that's because, um, and it's, that's thanks to your Holy Spirit, God, and uh, the hope that you give us every day. Amen. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and uh, start today's scripture. Um, we're going to be learning about Pilate. And if you know, if you don't know who Pilate was, he was actually the, um, the judge that, uh, condemn Jesus to be crucified. Um, and that's who we're going to be talking a lot about today. Um, so let's go ahead and read on Matthew 27, 1. And uh, take it from there. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of, of the people plotted against Jesus and put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. So he was the governor, Pontius Pilate. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered to him, It is you who say. While he was sitting in the judgment seat, his wife sent him, saying, have nothing nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barbaras and for Barbas, Barabbas, I'm sorry, Barabbas, and destroy Jesus. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they said to him, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. So, um, the main idea today is, God has revealed himself and made himself known. Ignoring or denying this may be the greatest folly of life. Uh, goal number one is to understand that facing Christ is an 
inevitable event. To analyze what you cannot be impartial towards Christ. To undertake a relationship with the Lord Jesus in a more intimate and personal way. And uh, our verse to memorize, Matthew 27, 22, and we did read it, but um, the verse is, Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they said to him, Let him be crucified. So guys, um, the title of the class today really caught my attention because many times today, um, one person might not actually come up to us and ask us directly, what are you going to do with Jesus Christ? I mean, that that rarely happens, um, that someone's going to just come up to you and ask you this. It might be an evangelist, maybe, um, that maybe doesn't know that you're saved and he comes up and asks you something like this. But it doesn't really happen every day. Now, um even though this question isn't asked every day, it really presents itself with the opportunity just about every day. Every day we have decisions that we have to make and the decisions that we make have to actually um, reflect back to this question. What shall you do with Jesus Christ? What are you going to do with the example that Jesus Christ has set forth to maybe help a person in need? To maybe be honest on um, a test score and in school maybe? Or maybe even be honest about something you saw at work that was wrong, but you don't want to maybe tell on that person. So, yeah, maybe people aren't asking you, what are you going to do with Jesus Christ? Tell me the truth. No. But maybe you are going to be presented with those opportunities. And remember, we're on Unit 3, Lost Opportunities. You might have an opportunity to showcase that you have Christ in your life by being honest, by doing the right thing, by having the, the actual uh, conviction to, to, to say no, to tell the truth, whatever the case might be. So you are presented with the opportunity that this question is asking what will you do with 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 Jesus Christ what are you going to do uh to show that you care in your life in your own personal life we each have a decision every, each and every single day to either bring forth Jesus or bring forth Barabbas now if if you know the the story pretty well uh the governor asked um Pilate, he asked, should I free Jesus or should I free Barabbas to the to the multitude? And the multitude um, uh, decided to free Barabbas, which is uh, a thief, I believe, is what he was. Uh, uh, he was either a thief or a murderer. Maybe he was even both. But the thing is, Barabbas wasn't a good person. I mean, he, he wasn't uh, a good moral person. He definitely wasn't a, a priest or anything like that. They literally freed someone that was convicted of crimes, serious uh, evidential crimes, and that's who they decided to free, not Jesus. Jesus is obviously the, 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 the Messiah, the Savior of life, the, the one who, who was um, giving people mercy, was healing people with his miracles. He was the one that was teaching his disciples. But they didn't decide to free that person. They didn't decide that they wanted Jesus. They wanted Barabbas. That's who they wanted. And many times in your life, you're going to have to decide, do I, want, do I want right or wrong? Do I want to be an example of Jesus Christ? Or do I want to be an example of the world, basically? So this is basically not maybe asked directly. But you face these decisions each and every single day as a Christian. Let's look at the introduction here. Marilyn Monroe, a famous American actress, was in a presentation 
when the evangelist Billy Graham approached her to say that the Spirit of God had sent him to teach the Word of God, but she replied, I don't need your Jesus. A week later, on August 4th, 1962, around 11 p.m., her housekeeper found her unconscious in her apartment in Brentwood, California. She was taken to the hospital, but nothing could be done to save her life. She had the opportunity to meet Jesus, but she rejected it. Likewise, Pilate had the opportunity to have a saving encounter with God when he was in front of Jesus. But he was carried away by his pride and lack of character, and he condemned himself. Every person has the opportunity to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Pilate, faced with the pressure of the crowds, exclaimed, explained, exclaimed, I'm sorry, what then will I do with Jesus called the Christ, making this concern the most important one in life? What does Jesus mean to you? Now, guys, this was a man that was faced with so much pressure in these times. Um, the people were about to riot if Jesus wasn't put to be crucified. Yet this man, uh, Pilate, um, he had reason to believe that Jesus was innocent. I mean, he he knew better than to believe the lies that were put towards him. Yet he cracked under pressure and decided to go forth with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Um, what a sad thing to know that you had denied Jesus. Now, you might not be the governor that has Jesus in front of you and you're going to crucify him or not. You know, obviously, we're not in Rome. We're, we're not in those times. But, guys, we face that decision every single day. You, you cannot tell me in your Christian life um, that you've never had a decision to reflect Jesus or reflect secularism. Now... Or, or reflect the devil, if you even want to put it that way. Because, guys, we are faced with those decisions each and every single day. I'm faced with those decisions every each and every single day myself right now. Um, but I try to act in accordance to what God has called us, to have, to have mercy for others, to look at others with love and not hatred. And that that's one of those decisions that you're going to have to make. You interact with people. You Maybe you're not as social as other people, but you do have to interact with people nowadays, whether it's where you're driving and you're, you're passing another driver the correct way, not the wrong way. Um, or maybe you're at the store and someone's about to enter the store and you, have, and you can decide maybe to open the door and, and have them go in or not. You know, it could be a number of different reasons. And your attitude reflects what you believe in. It really does. If someone that that is Christian, a true Christian, has Jesus Christ in their life, their their attitude, what they do, it reflects that. I mean, there's really no way to hide it. Um, the Bible says that when that we are the light of this world, you can't hide the light in darkness. There's just no way to it. So if Jesus Christ really is in your life and, and you're, you're Christian, you're a true Christian, that reflects out to the people in the world. I mean, there's no avoiding it. Now, point number one, Pilate sought to avoid his responsibility. He tried to ignore him. Now, when Jesus was bringing Brung forth to Pilate, um... Obviously, they want they wanted uh, Jesus to be put to death. They wanted him crucified. They wanted the worst possible punishment uh, for Jesus. Now, um, and in the beginning, Pilate didn't didn't want that. Pilate was you you know you you take care of it in your way. He he didn't want any part of this trial. He didn't want to make that decision. You know, this isn't my problem, and. That, that's um, sadly the attitude that many people um, take towards a calling of Christ. Whether it's someone handing you a pamphlet, 
uh, someone inviting you to, uh, to, to Sunday worship or, or another church, um, if you're not going to church or whatever, um, if, if you're going through that situation when, when someone invites you, and even if nobody invites you, even just uh, seeing a, a, a pamphlet out there somewhere uh, about a church service, and you know you're not going to church, and you just ignore that. That right there is the same attitude that Pilate took. I don't want this responsibility. You do whatever it is you're going to do with Jesus. This isn't my problem. Now, that's exactly the attitude that many people have. We ignore him. And ignoring Jesus Christ is a terrible decision to make. I mean... If you've ever heard of bad decisions, it doesn't get any worse than this, than to just ignore Jesus. Ignoring his death and his sacrifice is, is a horrible thing to do. People get offended nowadays if someone um, doesn't respect maybe a veteran or someone that's disabled. If we have so much respect for someone that has a disability or a veteran or maybe something else that I might not know about, tell me, how much, re how much respect does Jesus not deserve? Seriously, I mean, just think about that. People get really angry and defensive um, if, if you disrespect veterans or if you disrespect uh, people with disabilities or even people with um, sexual preference, which is something I don't want to get too into right now. But people get super offended by this. Um, I believe um, people have even brought other people to court for stuff of this nature. And, and they just get offended so much. Yet... If someone just ignores Jesus Christ, if someone just doesn't want anything to do with that, eh, that we don't look at as that being offensive. We think that's, that's okay. That's normal. And it's not okay for so many people to ignore Jesus in such a way. But at the same time, Jesus is the perfect gentleman. And if you don't want to actually serve him he's definitely not going to make you but that's the world we live in guys it's normal to deny jesus but it should it should definitely not be normal passing the decision to another that's point b so Pilate was now trying to pass the decision to other people so that's why he asked the multitude, what then shall I do with Jesus, the call to Christ? So he was trying to take the responsibility away from himself and kind of put it towards other people. Guys, he is, this guy was the governor. The decision was his. It's not going to be um, my decision whether you serve God or not. That's going to be your decision. That's the thing about um, the, the following of, of Jesus Christ. You decide. It's not that, oh, I'm, I'm the granddaughter of a, of a great preacher or, or the son or, or, or the nephew or whatever the case might be. No, that's not going to matter. It has to be your decision to serve Christ or to deny him. It's going to have to be your decision. What are you going to do? Not what your parents did or what your grandmother or grandfather did. It's what are you going to do? Do not pass the decision to another person. And also, Pilate pretended to admire Jesus. He was probably amazed with his attitude, his royalty, and his dignity. Uh, he found nothing wrong with him. He, he said this, I do not find any crime in him. He knew that Jesus was innocent. He knew that this was a just man. Even his wife warned him, warned him about that. But as much as he was pretending maybe to admire Jesus, he still sent him to death. 
it would have been better for Pilate to find a crime towards Jesus and then send him to death than to let him die anyway with no fault at all. Since Jesus was perfect, definitely Pilate was not going to find anything to throw dirt or, or sin at Jesus. He was the only perfect man on this earth, and this proves it. So, um, Point two, Pilate knew what was right but didn't do it. And how many times do we go through this, uh, go through this uh, decision? We know what was right, but we still didn't do it. Um, one of the people that describes us very well is the Apostle Paul when he wrote, um, I want to do right, but I still continue to do wrong. It is not me, but the sin that dwells in me, or the evil that dwells in me. Um, so he was describing it in a very detailed way that sometimes we know what's right, like we really want to do that, but we go the other way. And we struggle with this, especially in our youth. Um, I struggle with it um, many, many times when um, when I was younger. And I actually, let me take that back. I still struggle with it even today. Um, because every single day we're going to wake up and we're going to have to fight the temptation of this flesh. We're going to have to fight the temptation of, of wanting to maybe see something that we really like on TV and, and, and not... And not go to our Bible study like the class that we're having now maybe. Um, it could be a number of different things. But we're always going to have that fight. We're always going to know. I know I should this but I don't know. I just really don't want to do it. We're going to have that fight with us. So it's no more to have the fight. The key is winning that fight. Making sure that you actually make the effort. That even though maybe there's something else really cool going on. But you don't want to miss class. You don't want to let time drag on. Um, guys, there's really no excuse now. Um, if you maybe went to church and um, maybe you, you weren't sick, but you were maybe um, uh, you were lacking sleep, you couldn't pay attention, uh, your mind was on something else. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not good. But we're recording all the preachings on YouTube. There is no excuse now. There really isn't. And even before then, this shouldn't have been an excuse. But I mean, this even covers that. I mean, we... I mean, it's bad that we're in this pandemic. I mean, I, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Or, or any country or place or family. But, I mean, the, this, the, the pandemic caused this kind of hole to be covered. You, you really can watch the preachings, but here's the key thing, if you want to. That's the thing. Do you really want to? You know, are, are you going to put some time aside for you to do this? That's the big question. Um, he preferred his own comfort and prestige. Kind of what we're talking about right now. Pilate was in a very high position. You know, he was governor, he, he probably had it going on. Maybe he had a lot of money at this time because uh, even governor in today's world is hard to get to. And many people want that position. It makes you feel like you, you are um, in a position of power to do certain things that other people just can't do. That's what governors, um, that's the kind of power that they have. So, Pilate, um, having this position, was possibly scared that the people were going to go and complain. And Caesar, which was the, the, the highest ruler at that time, would be angry because maybe he was going to find out that he was collaborating with another king. So, Pilate was scared of this as well, to lose his position, uh, his power. Remember when, when Jesus told um, uh, the, the young man, I'm sorry, the young man told Jesus, uh, Lord, Lord, what, what more do I need to do to follow you? I've kept all the commandments, everything I've done it since a young age. And then Jesus told him, one thing you lack, go sell all your riches and properties and give them to the poor and then follow me. And then the young man, what did he do? 
Did he go sell all his possessions and give them to the poor like Jesus asked? No. He walked away. Why? Because the things of value, the things that maybe gave him comfort and security, those things were tied to, um, to, to what he wanted. He didn't want to sell all that stuff. He wanted to keep it. And therefore, he did not follow Jesus. Um, and that's exactly what Pilate was doing. He, he didn't want to put at risk his, his position, his power. Um, and he let Jesus be crucified. And he also betrayed his conscience and good judgment. Pilate was not dumb in any way. This, uh, you don't get to the point of being governor if you make terrible decisions and you have terrible judgment. No. You have to be good at it. And Pilate was good. I mean, he he had a, a probably a straight conscience and he had a good um, way to judge things. But obviously he judged things terribly here. Um, but not because he didn't know, but because he didn't want to. I mean... I mean, he, he had to have his conscience shouting, he's innocent, he's innocent. He knew that things were fabricated against Jesus. He just had to have known. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said, I found no crime against him. So Pilate, with his good judgment, knew that Jesus was innocent, yet he still did do the wrong thing by not freeing him. Now, um, Pilate, if he would have freedom, um, then this is just theory. I mean, this is, this is nothing concrete. If Pilate would have freed Jesus, possibly Jesus would have still died anyway because he, he was the sacrifice um, to the Savior to save the world. However, um, Pilate did make the wrong decision because there are, uh, I think there was a theory that I heard uh, quite a while back that Pilate had to crucify Jesus and he had no other choice because Jesus needed to be sacrificed because that's, that's the work that he was um, on this earth to do. And yes, that might not be true, but that doesn't mean it had to be Pilate making this decision. It could have been maybe done another way. We'll never know, obviously. We'll never know because we can't rewrite history. This is the way things happen. But when something has to happen, let's make sure we're not at the other end of that, uh, of whatever happens. I mean, um, maybe there... Let me let me put it this way to not make it so maybe not make it that that confu that much confusing. There are millions and millions of people that die in car accidents. There are millions of people that die from uh, lung cancer because of the consumption of tobacco. And yes, it's, it's terrible that that's happening, and it's terrible that it's happening to so many millions of lives but I don't have to be one of those millions that are making the wrong decision that's the best way that I can put it Pilate did not have to make this wrong decision and whether or not um, whether what would have happened then from the sacrifice of Jesus we'll never know but sometimes I don't like to put this sort of stuff into speculation um, we need to just focus on what the Bible is telling us not what if this and what if that? Because what ifs are, you can run on for hours thinking of what ifs. Um, and let's not, uh, you know, sometimes it, you might want to think about it, but let's not waste some time for what ifs. Let's actually go with the facts. Um, so therefore, he betrayed his conscience and his good judgment. And now he took Jesus out to the cross. And that's what happened with Pilate. Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent, but he condemned him. This is point number three. So he knew it. And here are the evidence of how he knew Jesus was innocent. 
Point A. He did not hear the voice of Jesus. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you king? And he answered, For this I was born, and for this I have come, into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate heard the voice of Jesus. Pilate was in front of the greatest, the greatest minister on this earth, and he still did not take salvation. Jesus was the greatest minister, the greatest minister, the greatest evangelist, the, the, the greatest example, the greatest at everything. And this man still ignored Jesus. He did not hear Jesus. Maybe he heard him say something, but he didn't understand it. Uh, maybe he thought he was crazy at this point. I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, he did not hear him. He didn't take the time to understand what Jesus was talking about here. Point B, he did not hear a warning voice. And this was even more obvious. This, had, uh, this wasn't even Jesus really speaking to him. It was his own wife. Have nothing to do with that righteous man because today I have suffered a lot of dreams because of him. So his wife, through dreams, knew that Jesus was a just man and he told Pilate, her husband, don't have anything to do with this just man. Don't have any sort of bad judgment against him. And, uh, and I've had these dreams and, and you can't do this. Yet Pilate rejected them and did not take them into account. His own wife, guys. Why, I know many of you are married now, but in life you're going to find out soon that the person that knows probably more than anybody else that knows you better is probably your wife or your husband if if you're listening to me, I mean, your husband and your wife, you're with them every single day um, once you get married. Don't you think they're going to know you very, very well? So he could have trusted his wife. I mean, this is the what your spouse is, is supposed to be the your absolute trust in. And, and a lot of people, of course, they, they trust their wife, their they, they live with them. They, they share um, maybe financial accounts. There's usually no secret uh, between matrimonies. Um, nowadays, it's very different. And I'm talking about worldly relationships um, that I don't want to get into. That's way off topic. But he, he had to have trusted his wife, yet he rejected it. Uh, and then the last point, C. He did not hear the voice of his conscience and washed his hands. The Bible says that he washed his hands and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. His blood is not on my hands. But little did Pilate know his hands were filled with stains of blood since that time. Because it was Pilate's decision, not the decision of the people. It was Pilate's decision to set forth free the Messiah, the one that was going to save the earth. Yet he washed his hands and let what happened happen. And not only um, was his hands filled with blood, the crowd said, his blood be on us and our children. The Jewish nation or, or I'm sorry, the Jewish people have suffered tremendously. And m more than likely, it was because of this bold statement that they said, His blood be on us and our children. Jewish people have suffered greatly today. Um, I'm sure all of us probably know about what happened in World War II, the Holocaust. Um, that was one of the most inhumane acts known in history and it's 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 just so sad sometimes when you uh, see maybe the pictures or, or go back and look at the history of what happened during the Holocaust 
And I'm not saying it was a direct tie to what happened here in the Bible, but it makes me wonder if it probably is. Um, I mean, the blood of Jesus, Jesus the Savior, be on us and our children? You're putting the blood of Jesus Christ on you and your generations? I mean... The, the cruelty of what happened in that time, it, it was just horrendous. And um, this is one of the things that, this isn't solid proof, and I'm not saying it is. Um, but sometimes I believe that maybe there was a tie to, to what happened in World War II, to what happened here. Because the blood of Jesus Christ was upon them, and not in the good way. Not his blood cleansing them, but the innocent blood that was shed was now on them. Their conscience, their children as well, including themselves. So, that's what happened in that time. And today, after everything we talked about, I ask you, what are you going to do with Jesus? What is going to be your decision? Because you that's watching me right now, it is your turn to now answer that question. What are you going to do today? Because now you're the one that's continuing the story. Maybe not as a governor, maybe not as pilot, but definitely as yourself. What are you going to do today? Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for this, this question, God, that we are able to answer ourselves, God, today. Of what, are we are, of what are we going to do to reflect you? What are we going to do when you're knocking at the door of our hearts, God? Are we going to ignore you or are we going to invite you in, God, and let you cleanse us, let you guide us? I ask, God, that today every single youth member and every single... Um, young women or even parents that might be watching this, please, God, allow them to understand, God, that we have to take this question seriously, God, of what are we going to do, God, with your salvation, the gift that you have given us with with your word, God. you Everything, God, that you said and you guided us with is written down, God. There's no excuse of not knowing, God, because the Bible has been along, around for such a long time, and it's the number one best-selling book. There are people that have the Bible literally in their home, God, but they never take the time to read it, God. Let us not be in the statistic, God, that we didn't do anything with you, that we just ignored you, that we didn't pay attention to you, God. Let us be in the category, God, that we actually read your word. We actually were, were trying in everything, God, to please you, God, to, to follow you from our youth, God. Let us make those right decisions, God, and let the next generation... Also learn from the example, God, that this generation now is sending, is putting forth, God. Please, God, allow everybody, God, that's listening to me right now, God, to make the right decision. Please allow them, God, to understand, God, that you are important, God, in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, God, for the, the time that we have been able to spend together. Please go ahead and read up on the next class. The next class, we'll be talking about... Um, Judas Iscariot, um, obviously this was the man that betrayed Jesus with a kiss, one of his disciples. Uh, that topic is going to be very interesting, um, and Brother Dennis will give that class. And I know Brother Dennis is always going to be guided by God um, to be able to teach you guys uh, as well as myself. So thank you guys for everything you're doing. Thank you for listening to these classes. Um, make sure you continue to listen to them, and also... Um, <clears throat> pastor made a great point. If you want to listen to these classes and maybe you're driving or something like that and, and you don't have much time to actually watch me through a video, um, you can always go ahead and put them on, on, um, uh, on the, on your car or something like that and listen to them while you're driving, um, or while you're doing something, whatever the case might be. We all, we all probably own headphones at this point. 
Um, and you can listen to me that way, uh, kind of like a podcast. But uh, definitely, um, you can get very creative on how you do things. But make sure you listen. Make sure you take some time. And uh, thank you guys for everything you're doing. God bless you. And God bless your family.